Right, so let's start with Jupiter. Uh, it's a 12-year cycle. It's a bit less than 12 years, but um, uh, basically every year Jupiter will be in a new sign. And uh, I think the thing about Jupiter especially is that it like brings a window of opportunity. Uh, it's not a window, you, you, you know, I think you have to act. I think you, to a certain extent, you have to make the most of that opportunity. It's like uh, you can just enjoy life or you can, you can use the opportunity to invest, you could say. Um, and Jupiter will bring an uh, expansion of horizons and that, that will normally come through opportunities that come your way. Um, like, for example, um, uh, let's say you had a planet in the ninth house. And ninth house is connected with ex with uh, study and travel. Well, Jupiter going through the ninth house or uh, aspecting a planet in the ninth house would, would definitely kind of give you this opportunity to really expand your horizons. It's often through study, travel, intellectual activity, cultural interests and things like that. And uh, as these planets often, Jupiter and Saturn in particular, uh, often bring people into your life. The kind of person that comes into your life with Jupiter is kind of a larger-than-life person who you really look up to, somebody who's a mentor or a benefactor, brings money or wisdom, because Jupiter is pretty much connected with wisdom. Um, and the sort of mistakes you're going to make with Jupiter, basically, is uh, it's like hubris, the idea that you're master of the universe and uh, nothing's going to get in your way or overindulgence because you know you can you can get too much of a good thing uh, and uh, that might not be so good and and if Jupiter is transiting in a difficult aspect let's say Jupiter transiting is square uh, your sun um, well uh, there may also be people who are judging you you know the judgment a judgment may go against you it wouldn't be a time good time for a law case for example a court case because Jupiter is the law and if it's not if the transit is an opposition or square a difficult one um, then then it might not bring such good results but generally Jupiter will always bring something good uh, it's never completely difficult okay so um, let's look at an example uh, we'll take uh, in this case um, Barack Obama and um, look at this. I just want to show you a, th a thing here. Um, you can see this this kind of arrow going forward, backward, and forward again. And, and this represents the retrograde movement of planets. Uh, and it happens like uh, over an eight-month period or a year period. Um, and as the sun, as the Earth kind of um, overtakes a planet on the inside, uh, and you're still and you're looking at that planet against the background of stars. It appears to go backwards. It's called retrograde movement. So when the Earth is between that planet and the Sun, it'll go retrograde. And when that planet is on the other side of the Sun, it'll be direct. Uh, but what this really means is that a transit is very liable to happen three times: once direct, once retrograde. And, and the third time direct again. That's why it lasts such a long time, minimum of eight months, uh, and, and for some planets like Pluto and Neptune, uh, two years. Um, in this case, however, um, the transit actually only happens once. And with Jupiter and Saturn, transits can happen once or three times. Uh, it just depends. There's a kind of retrograde period there, and then it zooms ahead, and then there's, there'll be another retrograde period. Um, uh, so it's possible for Jupiter just to hit your uh, a planet and move on, or Saturn to hit a planet and move on. And uh, 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 the period of influence is then much shorter. Uh, the interesting thing about Barack Obama's horoscope was that it, it was pretty uh, e easy to predict that he, he'd become he'd be elected as president, uh, and there were many many um, indications of that. Uh, but one of very very simple indication of that was every on the twentieth of January every election year post election year uh, is the inauguration of the president. So uh, at that exact moment, Jupiter. You can imagine, Jupiter's here at birth, 
It's, it's been around once, twice, three, four times. He's 47 years old, approximately. Uh, 48, 47. Uh, that would be four Jupiter cycles. And Jupiter's coming around for the fourth time. Uh, and at the exact moment of the inauguration, pretty much, uh, Jupiter at three degrees Aquarius is on his Jupiter at, at nearly one degree Aquarius. And the sun is actually also there because uh, the election, in, in, uh, the inauguration is always on the same date uh, and the sun has always just entered um, Aquarius at that point. So the sun was on his Jupiter and Jupiter came round on his Jupiter. Now, as Jupiter brings expansion and success, that was a pretty good indication that he'd win the uh, that he'd become president at that particular point of time. There were other indications, but that's a nice influence because it shows some kind of celebration or, or happiness. Uh, so that was just a simple indication of a win. Um, you'll see here that normally a Jupiter transiting to Jupiter is part of the Jupiter cycle. It happens every uh, nearly every 12 years. Uh, and it's not normally the most significant uh, um, uh, transit. Uh, Jupiter to the Moon or Jupiter to the Sun would be more significant. But Jupiter to Jupiter is, is the beginning of a, of a, a, a favourable cycle. Okay, so that's a little bit about Jupiter's transits. Um, and you might ask yourself, how on earth am I going to find out what's transiting in my horoscope, right? And um, there are astrology programs. This is the World of Wisdom programs. You could, uh, in this program, you could, um, you could click on Jupiter and then you can, it'll show the transit. And you can see that in the, uh, Jan that's exactly January 2009, uh, Jupiter peaks uh, as it hits Jupiter. Jupiter conjunction Jupiter. So some software programs will will show uh, will show the, the transits, but um, basically, if you if you want to work with transits, you're pretty much going to have to get uh, a book. Uh, um, there's these books here: the American uh, Ephemeris for the twentieth century, twentieth uh, century. And the American feminists for the 21st century, uh, they've got these tables of planets. It's not very complicated. You can simply follow the movement of the planets uh, and easily, it's actually easier than using software. So everybody, every astrologer's got this book. And as you can see, it's getting a bit battered, uh, this one. Uh, and you might think I've had it for a long time, but actually I've only had it for a year or two. Um, I've been through at least five of these books because you're always looking at the, the transits. And so. so you pretty much have to get a book, but you don't have to. You could you could um, find places on the net that will show you your transits, uh, or you could get software programs like World of Wisdom or Solar Fire uh, or Matrix. Uh, there are a number of pro programs out there, and they'll show you your transits. Uh, but you need to somehow find out you have to have an ephemeris to, to find out when is a transit of a planet about to conjoin or square or try and uh, your one of your birth planets. Okay, so um, let's look at Saturn. Uh, Saturn is an incredibly powerful planet in in the horoscope, and it's also an incredibly powerful uh, uh, transit. Uh, and, and Saturn will take 29 to 30 years to go around the Sun, in other words, to come back to its original position in, in your horoscope. And the age of 29 and a half to 30 um, is always a significant time for everybody on Earth because it's the time you grow up. Uh, Saturn is like trying to make you grow up, you could say. And uh, it represents karma or uh, experiences that you have to harvest. Uh, and uh, challenges that you have to overcome, obstacles that you have to clear, hurdles you have to get over. Um, uh, Saturn is uh, no fun. Uh, the satisfaction comes uh, from uh, achieving um, the goals that you set yourself and overcoming the ob obstacles. So Saturn represents challenges and adversity. You can't expect things to go easy. Uh, in that particular area where there's a Saturn transit. So, for example, if Saturn is 
transits and comes in conjunction with your sun or square your sun, um, and your sun is your identity, you're not going to feel very comfortable about yourself in your own skin. People are going to be disapproving you and say, why couldn't you do that better? And, and, and you'll be, uh, you know, you'll have to work on your weaknesses. Uh, or if Saturn in transit comes to your Venus and you want Venus is connected with relationships and love, uh, the Saturn transits is not going to, there's not going to be five or ten people saying, I love you. Uh, quite the opposite. Um, people are going to be demanding uh, some kind of, something in return for love. Uh, and so um, you probably, uh, you, you, you can't get away from Saturn. Uh, you can't escape it. You can't think it, things can be easier. The only way to 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 um, work with Saturn is to embrace the challenge. Uh, you need patience. You need perseverance. You need time with Saturn. So you should never give up with Saturn. The, the, the motto with Saturn is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Uh, so uh, a Saturn transit is great. Uh, you, one, one feels such a sense of satisfaction after having achieved a goal. And Saturn is all about setting goals, overcoming the obstacles, and achieving goals. Uh, it might sound easy to do that, but what actually happens is, you know, that, that uh, the kind of authorities you meet with a Saturn transit, and not uh, if it's a difficult transit, uh, you know, maybe not with a trine or a, a sextile transit, but a conjunction square or opposition, they're not going to be friendly. Uh, they're, they're not going to make life easy for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't rise to the challenge if it was easy. Uh, so the, the, it, uh, that's why it, uh, Saturn brings... Um, people into your life who, who, who are like authorities, unpleasant authorities sometimes. Um, and of course, Saturn is, is, is basically karma. Uh, in other words, the obstacles you meet with a Saturn transit are obstacles that you've put the, laid the seed for a long time ago. Uh, so if things seem a little bit too tough and you don't understand why, why it is tough, basically you, you, you have been that you, would, you did cause this problem, now you have to solve it. Uh, and it's the result of actions that you've taken. And another thing with Saturn, I think every time it, 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 it connects with the planet, it demands a commitment. You, you, you have, the, more, the quicker you commit yourself, the more you take on the responsibility, the better you're going to feel. And the more you try and escape, the more it'll just come after you until you have to do whatever is required. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's qu quite okay to get, sort of get married on a, on a Saturn transit or get a new job. Uh, anything that is, whenever Saturn comes along, it's like it starts the, the stopwatch or it starts the um, cycle of time. Uh, and Saturn is connected with a 30-year cycle, a 15-year cycle, and a seven seven year, seven and a half year cycle. Uh, so Saturn is very related to uh, the structures in our lives uh, and the time periods of these structures. So let's have a look at Al Gore, um, who, who, as you may remember, um, in the election of the year 2000, had exactly the same amount of votes or perhaps more votes than George Bush. Um, but in in the end, he lost the election, uh, and that was because a high court. The in the end, uh, a high court decision decided that um, uh, just to go with with Bush, a very contentious decision. But um, if you look at his horoscope, uh, you can see that um, the actual decision that took uh, the high court decision took place on December the twelfth of the year two thousand, and at that point Saturn was twenty five degrees forty four de minutes of Taurus, and his Venus is twenty five degrees twenty nine minutes of Taurus. In other words, you can imagine a whole thirty year cycle of Saturn going once around the horoscope, and it's coming around again, um, you know, and he's reaching the age of about fifty two, and and at the exact moment Saturn conjoins Venus, it's uh, actually hit once, twice, and the third time it hits Venus, uh, he, the decision goes against him. 
Well, Saturn's not going to give a decision for you. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, you know, it's not a winner uh, influence Saturn normally. Um, it, it's generally a blow, uh, a, an obstacle. Uh, a difficulty, and when you think about Venus, it's very strong in his, in 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 Al Gore's horoscope, it's in Taurus, which it rules, uh, um, and and Venus also rules Libra, which is the MC ruler, the career. So his ambitions are actually represented. His his goals that's connected with the MC is actually represented by by Venus. So when Saturn comes on Venus, it crushes his goals. Um, and, and he has to think about other things to do. The other uh, uh, thing you may remember about the the election in, in the year 2000 was Saturn, uh, Al Gore was uh, uh, accused of being very, rather stiff and wooden. And, and actually Saturn on Venus makes a very formal, not very spontaneous, uh, and very controlled and wooden um, uh, uh, kind of... Uh, 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 charisma. So Venus and Taurus in the fifth was actually, he didn't respond very well to the challenges of the election period, um, I guess. So you can see that also clearly on, uh, on this software, this World of Wisdom software. Um, this is the year 2000, this is the year 2001, and you can see once, twice, and three times Saturn comes on his Venus. And uh, this this one here is the exact time when the decision went went against him. 